There's a whole bunch of optical metamaterials, but for space propulsion, they tend to work at the microwave frequencies, and they were developing microwave metamaterial. Like the Boeing Cube, for example, developed by Boeing. Interesting, Boeing was involved in this classified work. So why are they working metamaterials? Well, this is a connection. It's possible, like the, they talk about the arts parts, the skin of the craft that crashed in Roswell, that it's layered material. And that could act as a metamaterial. Theoretically, if you took a 5,000 terahertz beam, which is probably in the far infrared, and aimed it at it, you should get propulsion. You should be able to move it. So that's a, a form of metamaterial. It's basically layers of magnesium and bismuth that are spaced just right to interact with this beam. While the significance of metamaterials is being explored by scientists from different perspectives, Dr. Jack Sarfati believes he understands how to apply them to the UAP discussion. I've discovered, along with other physicists, mainly uh, Keith Wanza, full professor of physics, Cal State Fullerton, we think we know, in principle, how to increase the coupling between electromagnetism and gravity in order to control the gravity field with electromagnetism, using small amounts of energy. The trick is, in metamaterials, we can make the effective speed of light very tiny, and by doing that, we increase the coupling between electricity and magnetism and the gravitational field it creates. So that's the trick. We're playing with the electromagnetic properties of metamaterial to amplify the effect of the input electromagnetic field on the gravitational field it creates. We're going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. We can then, with theoretical physics, take a tic-tac doing a certain maneuver and then we, from that, we can calculate what kind of gravitational field is required to do that. It's rotating. And then, how much energy do we have available? And then we can design a metamaterial that'll do it. You know, but it's, a, it's a complicated thing. But with teams of scientists, we can do it. That raises the question, how fundamental are metamaterials to understanding how UAPs maneuver? It explains how those things work. It's pretty elementary, actually. But once you have the right idea, everything falls in place. There's no mystery. I am saying there's no mystery as how this technology fundamentally works. There's no mystery. It's just now a matter of engineering development of the right kinds of materials that we could use to amplify the effect of electromagnetism in creating a gravitational field. That explains the close encounters of the USS Nimitz, the Roosevelt, and apparently many other close encounters that are still classified. And yet, not everyone agrees. Scientists find no theoretical consensus as to how this technology functions. When it comes to describing how the physics of the unidentified craft that the USS Nimitz encountered in 2004, and in general, the UAPs that the Navy have been reporting, I think that, you know, there's a couple good guesses that I could present as to how I think it's done. And only time and, and, and empirical scientific evidence will truly tell us uh, how it's done. But that being said, what I believe is happening is an extremely controlled interaction at the quantum level between gravitons and the rest of the ship in such a way that they can somehow control that entire interaction better than we can. It has yet to be proven that gravitons exist. I'm, I'm assuming they do in this scenario. So they're managing this interface with space-time, and that allows them to be able to do, you know, multiple thousand G maneuvers, whereas the average F-18 would crush under just eight to 10 Gs of forces. If the G-forces aren't being felt and experienced on the actual ship, and that they are only measured and experienced relative to our frame of reference, in that scenario, uh, the way that they would be surviving 
is what I guess would be anti-gravity method one. So that would be just canceling the entire gravitational field that they're experiencing. So for them, it doesn't matter how quickly they accelerate left, right, up or down. They're calm and still inside their ship. That's what it would look like. I think that we can passively describe what we're observing with current classical physics and just even today's quantum physics. But uh, to truly explain the physics behind what we're seeing, we're gonna have to find new physics. So I would prefer thinking in terms of superluminal propulsion. And I deal more with the ether rather than warping space-time. The idea of warp drive is based on more the conventional view of space-time being warped somehow and creating a gravity gradient by warping space-time. That's based in the general relativity paradigm, uh, which I don't ascribe to because I believe it's been, uh, it's a failed paradigm since it doesn't uh, predict electrogravitics, for example. And there are other replacements for it. 